Welcome to this episode of On Photography. So in this episode, I want to talk a little bit about the new firmware update that was be released the beginning of November 2017 for the EM1. So this is now version 3 of the firmware, and this is what I'm excited about with this camera. And this is what I mentioned in my initial review with this, is this is a software-driven camera. This is probably the first real one of its generation. Um, that really redefines itself with software and version 3 has really done a redefinition process. So one of the things I printed out a little bit of a list here uh, of the various uh, added benefits uh, that the EM1 now has because of this and, and this is should you get the EM1 and should you update to firmware 3.0 the answer is yes on both and that's sort of what I want to cover in this episode is to talk a little bit about what this camera has now become because this camera is not the same camera that was released under the 1.0 version of firmware so this camera has come a long ways in the software which is critical because I mean it's got some super hardware in itself and then now with the software kind of catching up to it this is actually pretty cool so some of the key pieces of this so first is well I need to back up so it came out November 1st I've installed it I've been using it for like over a week and I've been super geeked about it so uh, really happy with all the added features that it's driving now so uh, because we now have added exposure control in all the modes so this is kind of neat for video capture we, we you know video was really limited on this guy so you had a 4k camera and you know quite frankly it was lacking but now you basically have all these new modes that you can use for video capture big thumbs up on that one this really makes this guy somewhat of a contender for a low-end 4k camera so also added uh, autofocus and manual focus control for video. Again, a lot of these impact um, video. Next, and a big one for me, and I think a lot of you folks out there, is both RAW and JPEG. So now you can do RAW and JPEG both. So you can shoot in RAW, and then you can have JPEG previews. For me, this is really big because I hate having to go back then do um, JPEG conversions for my thumbnails and all that, all in camera now. Big thumbs up, E. Uh, still added, uh, added still image options and time lapse. Now this is big. I haven't had really a chance to play with this. However, what I'm interpreting this is, you can now take still images uh, in a time lapse mode, and then you can bring them into Lightroom, Photoshop, your your paint shop of choice, and apply. Um, you know changes to all of them in mass and then assemble them into your time-lapse video so say for example you want to do an HDR time-lapse you can do that you know take your still photos in the camera bring them into your program apply your HDR effects you know like local toning etc clarity and then combine them into a, a, your time-lapse movie big thumbs up with that one that one be I do a lot of time-lapses as you know on this channel and I'm really looking forward to experimenting with that um, the other thing is added option to shoot one to three images when using the self timer function. So this is actually pretty good, you know, if you, you know, taking a picture of the family or something where you kind of want on a self timer to kind of go through three in case people are making faces, whatever, you know, not a huge one, but, but nice. Now, the other thing is added histogram in live view, uh, both in live view mode for both still and video, huge bonus. I mean, this is one of the first things that jumps out at you. When, well, if, we, if I leave it turned on, if I turn this back on, uh, hopefully you, you'll see it pop up here. So you have live view right down here at the bottom. Sorry, uh, histogram. This is key. This makes this quality. This, this starts bringing it up into the prosumer realm as far as I'm concerned. Um, I shoot with a lot of different cameras and stuff. I like the histogram because it, know, it lets me see the kind of like the composure of my setting before I hit the shutter button. Big plus there. Uh, added focus viewing modes for improved quality image, 6, 8, 10x magnification, big bonus points for guys like me who have to wear reading glasses to see. And especially if you're going to be doing manual focusing and that kind of stuff, um, I think it's critical, especially with real long lenses. We'll get out in the field here when the weather gets a little bit better. And because I promised you guys sort of a, a video tutorial on using the T-mount with a really long lens. So we're going to do that. And that's going to make this easier. I, I mean, i got to tell you guys, this 3.0 version, totally geeked. 
Um, added two ways to show metering mode in the UI, so that's good. Uh, added multiple sections for image deletion. Yeah, I typically don't delete images on my camera, but if you do, it's a nice bonus. Can't hurt. I uh, added two options for display grid. Love display grids. Um, very handy. Uh, I'm an old timer. And I went through a lot of the Ansel Adam courses and the one-thirds and all that kind of stuff. So I'm very much all about grids for really setting up my shots, especially for landscapes. Love grids. So big plus. Auto exposure algorithm optimized. Holy yes. Love that. Um, you know, again, so far it's doing a lot better. Uh, again, I'll get into some deeper reviews, but I wanted to put this out. I've had a number of questions, you know, is, since I've started this channel. A number one, Joe, should I get a EM1? Again, the answer is yes. Number two, I've been getting questions. Should I upgrade to the 30 firmware? And again, my answer is yes. So, um, so improved auto exposure, because that's been one of the problems on this guy. So, um, Master Guide Template to Display Logic optimi Optimized. Okay. Um, I haven't really played with that. I believe it's they've given you some more of the templates if you look, uh, if you scroll over and, and plus go into the app about how to pose people and everything for different shots and then the camera sets it up. Uh, improved autofocus speed. Yes, I have noticed that. Um, I don't think it's perfect yet, but man, it's a lot better than it was before. The autofocus was really, really problematic before, and this is one of the things everybody complained about, and it's gotten a lot better now. I haven't really put it to some hard tests, but I can tell you it's definitely improved. I am definitely far happier with it. And then, um, you know, it did some other d different stuff from, you know, fix doing some bug fixes and then, you know, changed the number of thumbnails from 9 to 12. So, uh, but kind of long story short, I wanted to kind of cover it out, let every let all the ye, uh, M1 owners out there know the firmware is out there because unless you look for it or log in with the phone app, it doesn't really tell you. So I wanted to get it out there that the firmware release is out there. Go to the phone app, install it. Well worth it. Also, if you're thinking about buying the Yi, uh, you know, more so than ever, with the 2.0 firmware, you know, I, you know, for 300 bucks, I was in because I bought it, obviously, here at Sitting, and, and I definitely recommended it for 300 bucks. Now, I tell you what, with the 3.0 firmware, 300 bucks, 3 and 3, they definitely go together. This is a winning combination now uh, in my book for the $300 price point. I think, again, Yi sort of experimenting, and they released this knowing that it was going to be an evolution, and that's one of the reasons that I purchased it, is I knew this camera would be a bit of an evolution, sort of like a Tesla. You know, when, when Elon released the first Teslas, they had a few bugs, he fixed them in software, life is better for Tesla owners. And I think the same thing is going to go for us Yi owners, so... I'm actually considering picking up a second one as a backup. So, anyways, hopefully you found this uh, video interesting and informative, at least what's out there, uh, the updates to this. Again, the update process is very simple. Just start the application. It's going to tell you that it's found. Once it's connected to the Internet, it's going to tell you it's found a body firmware update. Just go ahead, accept it. It'll install it. Make sure your camera is well charged, got a full battery charge. It doesn't take very long. Uh, your camera will flash. Uh, you know, turn on and off. You know, at the end, you know, at the end of the upload process for to reestablish the firmware, that's normal. All very straightforward. So, hopefully, you enjoyed the video. If you did, hey, give it a big thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments if you got a Yi. What do you think? What are you using it for? Uh, I, I'm doing a lot of time lapse with this guy. I love the 4K in time lapse. Super crisp. So. Anyways, see you guys in the next video. Cheers.